The Eagle Scratch at the University of Russia is one of the leading state higher education institutions of Russia. The university offers training programs on more than 70 specializations. For about 20 years, the university has ranked in the top five among all higher education institutions of the Russian Federation. The Rudin University includes eight faculties and nine institutes. Today, 28,000 students, post credit students, interns, and trainees from 152 countries of the world study at the university. More than 90,000 University graduates work throughout the world. Students conduct research and make discoveries, organize innovative enterprises. More than 2,000 students are enrolled in the largest institute of the university, that is the Institute of Medicine. The institute graduates are now working in more than 110 countries. The institute includes lectures and seminars of prominent scientists who have made significant contributions to research in medicine. In many laboratories of the institute, students learn the secrets of the human body structure and the human organism functioning. Students are taught the latest methods to treat and diagnose patients. Today, the Medical Institute of People's Friendship University is equipped with 14 clinical laboratories where a system of training based on the information and computer-based testing and television broadcasts has been implemented. Okay, uh, dear friends, I welcome to the uni uh, Rudian University. My name is Margarita Redina and I'm a general speaker in the conference today and I'm a moderator of uh, our sessions today. First of all, uh, let me introduce our dean, uh, Professor Yelena Viktorovna Savinkova. Yelena Viktorovna, you're welcome. Please, you can begin your presentation. Good day. Dear colleagues, participant workshop of Green Universities, let me welcome you to the Redon University and now in, in, in Russian. В нашей конференции принимает сегодня большое количество российских вузов, российских друзей. И поэтому мы решили часть своего выступления сделать на русском языке с переводом на английский язык. Партнерство Greenmetric объединяет сегодня сотни университетов по всему миру. Uh, дорогие uh, dear friends, uh, today um, we have um, very, a lot of participants, um, Russian speaking participants. So uh, some presentations and some reports will be held in Russian uh, with the English translation. Мы рады, что российские вузы, в том числе РУДН, часть этого содружества. The Green Metric Partnership today are hundreds of universities around the world. And we are glad that Russian universities, including Rudan University, are a part of this partnership. Университет – отличная модель для того, чтобы понять возможности достижения устойчивого развития, оценить свой вклад в защиту окружающей среды и сохранение нашей планеты. Студенты получают знания, опыт, понимание своей роли в устойчивости. The university is an excellent model for understanding the possibilities of achieving sustainable development, assessing its contribution to uh, protecting the environment and preserving our planet. Students gain knowledge, experience, understanding of their role in sustainability. За время участия в рейтинге Руден смог добиться заметных улучшений, став национальным координатором. During uh, his participation in the rating, uh, Rudian University was able to achieve noticeable improvements, became a national coordinator. Мы с удовольствием обменяемся опытом и покажем наши достижения. We will be happy to exchange uh, experience and show our achievements. Коллеги, надеемся, что сегодняшняя встреча будет полезной для всех участников и привлечет внимание к вопросам устойчивости. Спасибо, Елена Викторовна. Thank you, Елена Викторовна. So, uh, and now, dear colleagues, we continue our program, and uh, it's my pleasure to. Um, invite to present you uh, Professor Riri Fitri Sari, uh, the head of uh, Green Magic World University Rankings. Please. Good afternoon, 
Taiwan, uh, dear Dr. Salvin Koma, Dean of Woodland University, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Margarita Regina, uh, I would like also to greet uh, Dr. Anatoly Kiricho, Vice of Woodland, uh, our speaker uh, from Moscow Agricultural Academy, uh, Dr. Safari from uh, and then also uh, Mr. Neil Vigaisino uh, from Bakostan University and speakers from IRNU uh, and RUNPEI and also from Siberian State University and all participants from all Russian University. Uh, welcome to this fourth uh, national workshop on UI Grammatic Post University Ranking for Russian University. I'm so happy to meet all of you again. I was in your university in Luden uh, four years ago, and it seems like yesterday. But during all that time, we've been uh, from uh, ups and down. You know, now we are all in the uh, pandemic uh, situation in which uh, COVID-19 is coming to a second wave also in our country, Indonesia. And uh, as a member uh, and as the uh, citizen of the earth, we know that we face uh, the same problem all over the world. So uh, UI Green Metric has been the first uh, world university ranking on sustainability uh, from 2010. And now we have covered 780 uh, universities from uh, more than 85 country. And uh, today we hope that we will have more friends. I've seen your university profile uh, of the speakers today in the, uh, in the internet. And we know that we all facing the same problem, but all, you know, all your university has been uh, very well maintained uh, all, of, uh, all over these years. This is something that all university in the world should learn from you because uh, we know that during this pandemic situation, universities are not being used uh, to the uh, optimum level, but you have to, we have to keep the maintenance and operation running well so that it will be preserved for the generations to come. Uh, and today we will learn uh, from different best practices from uh, university leaders in Russia uh, regarding this implementation of six indicator of UI Green Metric, which is um, setting an infrastructure, energy and climate change mitigation uh, programs, and then waste management, water management, green transportation, and then uh, academic and uh, research and education uh, in your universities. So um, we are so happy to know that uh, uh, Rudan University has been a great supporters of us. I've uh, been uh, meeting uh, ready now for, uh, in um, Turkey, in Indonesia, and in Cork Island uh, from year to year. And we know that uh, we are very concerned to the ecology that's the word being used in Russia, I know, for this. And uh, knowing that uh, we will uh, be able to work together in partnership to uh, realize the 17th Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, together, we can make a better future, even though we have to succeed with this pandemic situation. Uh, I would like to remind of all, all of you that uh, UI Green Metric uh, Submission date will be closed on the 31st of October. And we hope that if you have questions and uh, if you would like to have your uh, password or any problems, please contact us at greenmetric at ui.ac.id. And uh, we hope that we will work on validation for the result will be uh, announced on December 2020. Um, maybe you could... Uh, put on some information before the pandemic situation, because we know that it's uh, kind of different now, but we are looking to a quick solution to our uh, global problem in uh, for COVID-19, and then we can go back to normal and uh, giving um, 
providing infrastructures and facilities and good living for all uh, the future generation. Ladies and gentlemen, um, during this pandemic situation, we will have already uh, conducted more than uh, 30 uh, co uh, webinars in which it is very, uh, very good in uniting all university leaders and from uh, for getting us working together. Uh, however, uh, we would like to learn a lot from uh, best universities in Russia regarding all your updates on uh, green campus and sustainable campus today, as um, we have planned, it is uh, realized on time, you know, and today, yeah, and then uh, we will still have uh, some uh, some agenda um, in October in Campinas, Brazil, and also in Como uh, Sonora, Mexico, and then on the 13th and 14th of uh, October, you are invited to the global uh, world U UI Green Metric meeting uh, in Zanjan, uh, Iran University. Without any further ado, I would like to thank all of you for being here today, and I wish you a fruitful conference. Thank you. Uh, and have a nice day. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor uh, Sari. Uh, and now to our program today. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, I need to say you, we have small, very small, really very small corrections in the program. And uh, 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 just uh, let's look together. What do we change today? So uh, this is our program, the latest uh, variant, latest version. So uh, just right now, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Gunavan Chiapiono, uh, member of uh, uh, expert member of uh, UI Green Metric World University Ranking. After that, uh, uh, there is my presentation. And uh, after that, we go to the session, to the presentations of our colleagues from different universities of uh, Russia and uh, of the world at all. So uh, this is our plan for today. Uh, between the presentations, uh, we will have an opportunity to make a group photo using our uh, distance working instruments. And uh, uh, in addition, uh, there is an opportunity to uh, get acquainted uh, with the uh, declaration of membership. Uh, probably some of uh, our participants today are not uh, yet the participants of uh, big networking of Green, uh, Green Metric uh, World University ranking. So it's possible to sign this declaration and uh, to become a member of uh, this partnership. And finally, after all the presentations, after all the uh, uh, reports of the universities, uh, we have uh, an open discussion. Generally, we have to discuss our plans for the future, for the next year, probably. And uh, uh, we will try to understand what uh, issues, uh, what questions, what problems, or uh, probably we will discuss next time and what uh, main directions for the green universities do we have now. So uh, let's go to our program. And uh, it's my pleasure to present you and to invite uh, our next speaker and our representative of uh, an expert board of Green Metric World University Ranking, uh, Professor Gunavan Tiakiono. Please, you're welcome. Hello, everybody. Your Excellency, Professor Savankova, and my colleague, Dr. Redina, and all of the happy participant. I wish all of you in a healthy condition. May I ask to access the share screen? Uh, uh, yes, please just uh, try to use uh, dem uh, demonstration um, test. Okay, I think uh, it's show to all of you. Well, so okay. Think, yes, it works, yes, yes. Okay, it's my pleasure and an honor to be here to share our experience with all of you. I think Professor really ha already mentioned about a lot, so I don't have to go through. We are possibly the only ranking organization 
to rank the sustainability of the campuses around the world. We do have stars, but it's on only a rating. And also University League, People and Planet is on only rank uh, United Kingdom's university. But UI Green Metric, UI Green Metric is the only uh, world university ranking organization for the greenness of your campuses around the world. We start by 2010. At that time, only a few universities joined us. Not a few, 95 actually, with, uh, around 35 countries. And now we get uh, a lot. We run for all, almost 10 years now. You can see from this chapter, the green one is mostly environmentally uh, focused ranking system. All of you know this aspect, but unfortunately we are now fully developed only environmental issues rather than social and economic. We are developing those uh, um, metrics for social and economic development uh, to make a balance to the environmental concern about the sustainability issues. What is our mission? Actually, uh, of course, uh, we enable the uh, higher education around the world to be sustainable university by shaping global higher education and research in sustainability creating global sustainability leaders, and then partnering on solution to sustainability challenge. No fees, open for all, online questionnaire, university profile, and then dynamic university network around the world so we can share, like today, the event is about that as well. And then we focus on university policies and actions on sustainability. We have six indicators and six categories, each with its indicator. First setting infrastructure, it get 15% of the point. And then climate and energy and climate change with 21%, because it's combined a lot of things, a lot of issues there. Waste, 18%, water, 10%, and transportation, 18%. Education and research is, uh, consists of 18% of the points. So just give you an overall picture of what happened. We cover six regions around the world with 85 countries, with uh, six category, possibly will be expanded or within these uh, six categories or expand another category, but we are still in the process for that. And then the campus setting, which can be rural, suburban, urban, or city center, or even within a building. Some university has only very few uh, students. And the type is comprehensive or specialized higher education. So you can choose and position your university around the, our indicators. We are developing this uh, about the social and economic impact. So the theme for this year is universities' responsibility for sustainable development goals and world's complex challenges. The profile will be the public access to open space for the university own open space community services, start up for the green economy, and information on network and partnership. Just show you a picture. You see water and waste are mostly quite uh, uh, spread evenly. But setting infrastructure, energy and climate change, transportation, education, and research is not reaching that uh, even spread. Concern. So this indicates that most universities put a lot of attention on waste and water. Rather, uh, it's not necessary that you are not concerned about the other indicators, 
but possibly we need to catch up for that. So this just uh, show you the picture. In two ten, uh, 2010, we got only 95 universities got participated and 25 country. By 2019, we got 780 universities around the world participated in our ranking system. And that's cover 85 countries. So the result for the last year, top 20 universities you can see, and you can access our website, you can uh, observe that. Wageningen University and Research of the Netherlands get the number one spot, and Oxford University get the number two spot. University of California, that is a number three spot. Unfortunately, the People Friendship University of Russia hasn't get into top 20, but you are ranked very high, uh, as I understand. How about uh, Russia's university in Russia? Are UDN University ranked number one? So the rest can also make kind of improvement to catch up their ranking. And I think our RUDN University also get at a very high position around the world. You can see if we put uh, one, two, three gold, silver, or bronze uh, category. So RUDN University had already in the gold position together with other 63 universities around the world. But Russia, also have 11 universities at the position of silver and 34 universities at the position of bronze, which can be, of course, improving every year. So we need to get to the main goals is sustainable universities. Of course, uh, then we can get a sustainable future for the life of all of the people around the world, because universities is the spearhead of change. So the principle is only open, participatory, and then mutual respect, collaborative. So this is uh, our own uh, principles. Right now, 35 universities from 30 countries had uh, voluntarily want to arrange as the coordinator of the UI Green Matrix uh, for workshop sharing experiences, good practices, and also what kind of failure we can improve. So that's it, uh, the picture. These are all of the gentlemen and ladies uh, which we consider uh, the, the future leaders as well. So these are our program. I think probably the 17th one is uh, today's uh, event, which uh, happened in uh, People Friendship University of Russia. It's the 24th of September. But we still have had our international workshop will be going on during 13 to 15 October in Sanjan, Iran. Also using the uh, webinar, okay? So you can go into the website here, the, the black box, you can see that. How do you participate? So you just go to our website and then uh, email Green Metric if you have a question. Then we go to the registration page view. And then, uh, okay, these are top 10. Then you can browse going on. And then you don't have to confirm it by the first time you uh, full, uh, fill out the questionnaires. You can save it first. And then you can go on 
with each uh, category, setting infrastructure, energy and climate change, which are on here. This page is for setting infrastructure. And you can observe the important information about that. The size of the option. And this is still uh, at the category of setting infrastructure. Which contain you can choose. But you need to submit the new evidence. This is climate change. A lot of evidence. Evidence is quite important for you, for us to evaluate it. Finally, after you download evidence template, we, we have the template you can take it out after you fill out the, the blank page. Now, we are experiencing a new indicators, but, but it's not, will be, it will not be calculated for uh, this year. Community services will be our concern for social equity. We can, you can uh, always ask questions if you have difficulty. Email us and then we will uh, try to answer. If we cannot answer it directly, we can uh, help you how to find the answer as well. Then you finally you can take out. So evidence could be pictures, graph, table, and data, etc. Provide explanation. Don't forget that. And then explanation or evidence should be in English, unfortunately. If you are not sure, don't submit it yet. But if you you are quite sure then you can click yes, then you submit it. Prof really have already mentioned that uh, by the end of October, it will be closed and will be announced. We will announce the result by December. So these are useful link. I think if you click on our website, it will show. So thank you. These information are provided by Ms. Sabrina Ramadianti, uh, who also in charge almost full time to answer your question for all of this. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I hope I'm not taking so much time for that. Uh, okay, thank you, Professor Tiahiono. Uh, thank you for such a detailed uh, presentation, such a detailed information. Uh, as I know, uh, sometimes universities who uh, want to present uh, their results, who want to uh, try to participate in ranking, really have uh, sometimes uh, difficulties uh, with uh, all these uh, issues. How to present information, how to uh, show the evidences, what, is it, uh, what are these uh, evidences uh, finally. So it's really interesting and it's really useful and thank you uh, once again. And uh, for all the well, Russian well. participants, I just uh, want to say, dear colleagues, please, if you have some questions, don't hesitate, ask us, ask uh, the representatives of the central part of uh, our ranking. Please ask, please write them, and uh, it is possible to participate, and it's possible to show your results really quite good and uh, to uh, take into account all the details of uh, your efforts on uh, greening of uh, our universities. Uh, дорогие друзья, хочу напомнить нашим uh, российским участникам, пожалуйста, если у вас есть вопросы, обращайтесь к нам, обращайтесь к центральной uh, части рей uh, рейтинга Greenmetric. Uh, пожалуйста, спрашивайте, как uh, подать ту или иную информацию, что такое uh, свидетельство или подтверждение, как они называются. Любые вопросы, пожалуйста, спрашивайте. Мы постараемся ответить вам на любые ваши вопросы относительно именно участия в рейтинге. 
So uh, thank you once again, uh, Professor Chahyono. And uh, currently no it's welcome. my... <laughs> yes, thank you. So uh, currently it is uh, time for me for my presentation and uh, I will uh, try to show you what uh, we have done and what is uh, our activity as the national coordinator in uh, Brimatic Networking. So we will begin here with this presentation. And uh, this is a presentation about the results of uh, Russian universities uh, in uh, uh, green metric ranking networking. So uh, um, I just uh, would like to present you the updated information on um, UI green metric uh, Russian national partnership. So uh, what uh, we will see today uh, this is a presentation about uh, positions of Russian universities in uh, green metric ranking uh, according to the results of uh, 2019. A uh, few words about growth prospects and limitations because uh, in each country we have some uh, difficulties, we have some bad, uh, better opportunities and uh, some national uh, limitations probably. It exists uh, virtually in all the countries participating in uh, these rankings. Uh, collaborations, consortia and university associ uh, associations in Russia and abroad. Uh, just a few words about collaborations between our Russian universities and how can we uh, uh, participate in these collaborations and uh, what can we do all together, together with uh, Greenmatic uh, ranking and these uh, partnerships um, organized for uh, another uh, purposes for another project. Uh, what else? Uh, a few words about events of 2020 and plans for 2021 for the next year. First, we begin uh, with the ranking results of uh, Russian universities. Currently, we have a little less than uh, 50 universities, Russian universities in this ranking. And you see that uh, the positions can change from year to year. As for us, as uh, for experience of uh, the Ruden universities, uh, right now we are on the position 38. But uh, on the start, we was on the position 371. You see the difference and uh, all these uh, changes, all these uh, positive changes was possible uh, just because our management, our university decided once uh, that uh, environmental uh, problems are the problems of our university too, and uh, we can uh, do something for the improvements, and uh, we can change uh, the situation. And really, this effort uh, was really efficient, and uh, uh, now, as you see, we are on the very good positions. Uh, from uh, one point of view, it is uh, really more easier for us because we are a relative big university and on another hand uh, we have uh, worked in this direction a uh, few decades just three decades we have uh, uh, faculty of ecology ecological faculty virtually the first in russia and uh, this is a multi-profile um, faculty so uh, all the uh, efforts all the uh, things our university uh, wants to do in the field of ecology of environmental improvements it is possible to support using our research activities and our uh, teaching activities so uh, again to the list of russian universities uh, just uh, first part of this list you see here so uh, as i told uh, this is a little less than 50 universities in russia but uh, if we will switch to the map of russian federation uh, to the map of uh, Russian universities, you see in Russia we have over 740 universities. So if you will uh, try to um, describe our plans for future, of course, <laughs> you see that uh, we have virtually so much universities as uh, now we have by green metric. So it is possible to find good uh, places for the growth. It is uh, possible to find uh, good opportunities for partnerships. And surely this um, partnership can be useful and can give us uh, 
opportunities for um, exchange of experience, for new research projects, for new educational projects, uh, for academic mobility, and so on. A uh, few words about uh, our growth uh, prospects and limitations. And uh, I would like to begin with some limitations. Um, it is our life and it is our state now. It is, uh, these are our conditions. In Russia, we have a very, very strong regulations in many spheres of our activities. So we have regional and national specificity in location of universities. And uh, uh, in development of uh, study directions, we have such limitations and uh, in organization of collaborations and mobility. Sometimes it is difficult to organize just because um, of um, huge size of our country. <laughs> Sometimes it is impossible to organize oral meetings and uh, this opportunity that uh, we uh, use now, it is a little new for us. If you want to come all together and to discuss our problems and our future prospects, probably it is more easy to use such distant instruments. But uh, if you would like to uh, come together to Moscow um, and uh, to organize some oral session, of course, it will be uh, more difficult for us. Um, about location of universities. Generally, in Russia, uh, we uh, have a little special conditions uh, because sometimes our university is just uh, a one building, virtually without campus, uh, sometimes um, even without dormitories for students. So uh, if we have only one building, we just cannot uh, be the best in the ranking and we cannot show that, yes, we have a lot of green areas around us. But uh, for some universities, it is not a problem. And uh, uh, thank you, uh, the management of Greenmetric. Thank you, all the experts of Greenmetric. Yes, uh, now we have this opportunity to present the university as a city university, as a suburb university, as a university with a big campus. So uh, all these positions are possible. Uh, about regulations and study directions. Yes, uh, there are some strong standards for us and uh, we have to follow the standards. Uh, we have the standards for uh, training of specialists. And uh, on the level of uh, bachelor students, sometimes we cannot uh, develop some special interesting areas, but uh, on the master level, yes, uh, it will be possible. And uh, uh, for big exchange of experience, for the development of new educational directions, yes, the level of master programs is more uh, convenient and more uh, comfortable. Uh, strong state standards, uh, we have also for our universities uh, as organizations uh, of a big uh, social role. So, um, we have standards in building and construction. We have uh, standards in organization and development of infrastructure. And here, sometimes we just cannot use uh, probably very good instruments and very good opportunities. As uh, an example, uh, collection of rainwater or something else like this. Um, sometimes uh, it would be interesting to organize a green building and to uh, use green building opportunities uh, to uh, develop our campus, but uh, sometimes the best uh, world practices cannot be applied uh, for our universities just because of this uh, state uh, normal regulation, state standards. And the limitation of this year Yes, uh, all we have this problem, uh, all we know about this problem about COVID, but let's see uh, what can we do in this situation. And about uh, opportunities for us, about growth uh, prospects. Uh, prospects. So, uh, first of all, yes, uh, we can organize partnerships, we can create uh, new groups of uh, universities, and uh, not only of universities, but also uh, of research organizations and uh, some um, business structures. Uh, we can um, organize joint uh, research uh, projects, teaching projects, cultural projects, and it works, it exists now. Uh, what can we do else for the future? Uh, it's possible to speak about uh, extension of external partnerships, and uh, uh, we want to extend our uh, partnership. Uh, we want uh, to uh, extend our networking, 
So uh, we would like to invite uh, new universities for the future and uh, probably our partnership will be more, useful, uh, uh, more efficient. Exchange of experience and best practice. Yes, uh, it's necessary to do and we plan to develop this direction in the future. And uh, uh, this limitation of COVID, limitation of this year, this limitation bring us uh, the opportunity to use uh, these distant technologies. And uh, you see that now it is uh, more easier to uh, uh, come all the friends together and discuss problems important for us. We don't need to uh, use transport. We don't need to use uh, uh, a lot of uh, financial <laughs> resources. Uh, we just can uh, come to the computer and discuss our problems here and uh, meet some new uh, interesting ideas. So uh, this is a new opportunity for the collaboration. And uh, in this situation, yes, this uh, bad situation, this problem give us uh, new opportunities for the growth. Uh, about collaborations of Russian universities and collaborations uh, of uh, the, part, uh, the participants of uh, Russian part of Green Metric. Uh, we can speak about educational, research and cultural um, partnerships. And as example, uh, some participants of uh, Green Metric um, networking in Russia are also the participants of uh, a new consortium. Um, capacity building for the green economy. This is a new consortium, uh, consortium and uh, it, it was organized only this year. Probably it will be extended and probably uh, we can organize this collaboration all together, this consortium and uh, uh, Greenmetic uh, universities in Russia too. Uh, what else? Uh, in addition, we have uh, participations in uh, different um, uh, um, networking universities like uh, universities or University of Shanghai organization, BRICS uh, University. So this partnership, this uh, network, uh, networking universities are also an opportunity for experience, experience and exchange. And uh, uh, surely we uh, will present the ideas, the informations from our Green Metric uh, meetings also in these universities and probably we will invite our new partners and colleagues uh, from these partnerships too. Um, in addition, in Russia, we have an association of uh, green universities and uh, this is a little parallel organization. Um, these are our partners and colleagues and uh, sometimes competitors. Um, this is a very uh, good developed partnership in Russia, this uh, association of uh, green universities uh, with a very big program of activities like um, uh, environmental education, a lot of uh, different cultural projects. So we collaborate the partners, uh, participants of uh, green metric networking. Uh, we, uh, we are collaborating also in this association of green universities of Russia. And uh, today I know that uh, the participant um, of uh, this uh, um, association of green universities of Russia management is here with us. Uh, Irina Tikhonova, I hope uh, she is here and I hope uh, she can uh, join our, uh, she can uh, attend our discussion and uh, say a few words about uh, this association. Let's go further. This is, um, Another one uh, slide about Association of Green Universities of Russia. And uh, uh, what is new, uh, this year we had the first results of uh, ranking of um, this um, partnership, this Association of Green Universities of Russia. And uh, um, I hope all the participants, all uh, the uh, um, universities taking part in this uh, Russian national ranking will also uh, be presented in um, UI Greenmetic ranking. About events of 2020, uh, there are um, some joint research projects among uh, our universities and educational projects. Um, as example, I can tell you about uh, um, organization of some new uh, platforms educational platforms where the educational programs will be presented. 
uh, summer schools, uh, master's, pro uh, master's programs, uh, massive open online courses, etc. So all these uh, educational activities must be um, um, available for all interested students and uh, we try to organize this work. Uh, we organize scientific conferences in our partner universities and uh, as example currently we have uh, another one event right now we have a conference on actual problems of um, ecology and nature management um, this is the conference running uh, today and tomorrow and this is a 21st conference so uh, some colleagues from the universities that are today here with us in this uh, green metric uh, workshop they are also um, participants of uh, our conference uh, and uh, another one activity this is a week of uh, ecological education and training uh, this week begins on 26 uh, of september and uh, uh, after that we have a marathon of uh, the education for environmental education so for this event, I can uh, invite our colleagues and our partners, please uh, take part in all uh, these um, uh, activities. Um, you can attend uh, this event, uh, you can just uh, visit the webpage of uh, our new uh, consortium, uh, Capacity Building for uh, Green Economy, and uh, you will see the program of uh, all these events, and probably you will find some, uh, something interesting for you. And plans for the future, plans for 2021. Uh, surely we plan to extend our partnership. That's why um, I will show you just uh, after this uh, presentation, the declaration of um, membership. So uh, you can uh, just get acquainted uh, with uh, this um, declaration. And after that, the universities who will be interested uh, in participation uh, in this declaration, just uh, send this signed declaration for the organizers. Uh, development of the collaborations, it means uh, currently we have some joint projects and uh, it's necessary to develop of uh, this activity. It's necessary, of course, uh, to organize probably some uh, joint courses, some joint uh, project, research projects, uh, educational projects, academic mobility projects, etc and organization of national workshops and meetings in the regional universities. Surely it's very important. And uh, of course it is uh, very interesting for us and it's our pleasure to see all of you in Moscow, but probably some our regional university also uh, want to present their experience and uh, their best practice. So uh, you're welcome, let's discuss these things. Probably we'll move next time from Moscow to some another regional university. So uh, that's all of me right now with this presentation. And uh, now I need to present you our declaration of membership. So let me share the screen. Let me share, uh, share this um, present uh, this text, declaration of membership. Sorry, take a second, please. So I hope you can see uh, the declaration of membership now. Dear colleagues, uh, this declaration will be placed uh, on the web page of our workshop. Uh, also, I can send it you, uh, to your universities if you want to uh, have, this, um, uh, have it uh, like a uh, road document. So uh, you're welcome, please. Let's come together, let's be partners, let's uh, collaborate all together, let's organize our networking. So uh, thank you so much, dear colleagues. It's all of me now, and uh, let's make a small break and uh, uh, we will continue in uh, five minutes. So let's make a small break.
Коллеги, встречаемся через пять минут и продолжаем наши сегодняшние сессии.
Okay, dear colleagues, uh, we begin our next session, session number two. And uh, we discuss managing setting and infrastructure, energy and climate change waste in Russian universities. So uh, just a few words about experience of our university. Uh, as a moderator, I just uh, will take five minutes of your time. And after that, uh, I will present our colleagues who will um, uh, present experience of our Russian and foreign universities. So let me show my presentation. Let me share the screen. Here we are. Oh, no, here. So, and uh, we discuss a few issues and lessons learned from managing setting and infrastructure at uh, Rudian University. Uh, as I told in Russia, we have different conditions uh, for uh, the universities in different regions. And sometimes it is just impossible to um, organize the work on bringing uh, so good and so efficient, like uh, probably in some uh, in other universities. We just uh, sometimes uh, do not have such a big territory, such a big green area. Uh, sometimes we have uh, strong limitations for the uh, development of educational programs, uh, limitations in some in other areas of our activities. But uh, in any case, it is possible to start. It is possible to try to uh, move to some uh, um, better uh, characteristics of the universities. So let's look uh, what have we done in our university. Uh, coming to the uh, main categories, main evaluation categories uh, in the ranking. So uh, I will present our achievements in setting uh, and infrastructure and in transportation, a few words about transportation. Generally, yes, uh, you can understand that uh, we divide all our activities, all our characteristics in these six categories. But uh, in reality, everything is uh, connected with each other. And sometimes it is impossible to divide all our life uh, strong in these con uh, six categories. So uh, good achievements of uh, Rudan University. Uh, since 2015, we have a separate collection of waste and we participate in recycling. In our university, uh, we have different containers for different types of waste. Even for plastic, contain uh, plastic waste, we have uh, different containers. So uh, we use this uh, uh, approach to divide our waste and to um, uh, participate in uh, recycling of uh, different uh, waste that uh, we have in the university. This is uh, paper waste, uh, plastic waste. So, and you'll see some equipments uh, we use now for uh, recycling, for preparation to recycling of our waste. It works. So we have here uh, virtually uh, more than five years practice, uh, practice experience. Uh, about um, transparency of our environmental policy. Since 2017, our university has a environmental policy and uh, this environmental policy is presented on the web page of our university. It's possible to come to the uh, university uh, web page and uh, to find there this um, subsection about environmental policy. Uh, it's possible to find an actual information about the state of the environment in our territory. It's possible to find uh, some uh, numerical data about uh, our achievements um, in the field of uh, environmental improvements. Everything about education, about uh, resource uh, saving, about uh, new initiatives of our staff and students. So, and uh, one of these initiatives, uh, it was uh, environmental monitoring of our territory, of our campus. Uh, we are uh, relative happy because we are in Moscow. And on another hand, we are in a very good uh, district of Moscow, a very good part of Moscow with relative uh, positive um, conditions. And uh, it is possible to say that our environment uh, is not distracted. 
So uh, in any case, uh, yes, we have a very strong sources of pollution and our students and our staff help to uh, uh, control this pollution and help to create models. How can we manage uh, this situation? Of course, uh, we cannot stop all the autos, we cannot uh, all the cars, we cannot stop uh, all the technique around us, but uh, we can try to uh, make assessment of this situation and uh, we can try to uh, suggest some improvements in uh, infrastructure organization of our campus. And uh, talking about transportation, uh, generally we'll present uh, this material next time in the next uh, Greenmetic meeting in Iran. And uh, um, just a few words about our activity here. As you know, Moscow is a big city and uh, we have a quite good developed system of public transport, uh, transportation. So um, one of uh, our achievements is that uh, right near to uh, our university, close to our territory, um, in the nearest future, we will have a metro station. And this metro station uh, will have a name of our university, Rossiyski Universitet Druhba Narodov. And uh, um, it was possible thanks to collaboration of our university and the Moscow government that uh, you know, these plans uh, was uh, realized and now we have this opportunity to have right uh, close to our territory in the next years this uh, metro station. This must help us to uh, make the transportation uh, flows not so intensive, not so active. So in this case, uh, we can speak about uh, some good results in organization of transportation around us. So a uh, few words about monitoring system. You see, uh, this was a big job and uh, it was a big project for us uh, because uh, we study our territory. We try to understand all the uh, smallest local effects uh, of um, environmental pollution. And uh, uh, we try to understand what can we do to improve the situation. As I told, we cannot stop all the transport around us, but we can think about uh, probably uh, vegetation on the territory and what can we do to uh, support this good vegetation state. And in addition, uh, this, is a so, uh, this is a base for um, future research uh, in environmental modeling, in uh, development of uh, monitoring systems and uh, in the development of uh, information and analytical systems. So for us, it's a good uh, opportunity. Um, about the educational programs, you can find all the information on the web page of uh, Rudin University, but uh, this is a big uh, part of our life. We are university and this is our specialty that uh, we have different educational programs. So uh, we can say that we use this uh, good results of our uh, participation in uh, Green Medic events. And we pre uh, present the results of uh, all these activities also in our educational programs on all levels of education uh, for bachelors, for masters and for PhD students too. Um, about the research topics, yes, uh, you can find an information too on our web page and uh, uh, key projects of the university. Um, and uh, finally, you see here down on the page um, a new project that uh, includes all our previous results on monitoring of our territory. And uh, this year we have um, a development of this project and uh, this will be a, a big new initiative project of uh, our university, project on creation of IT instruments for the supporting of uh, this environmental monitoring system. So as I told, uh, we use our um, good results uh, to present them uh, in our educational programs. And uh, here you see a part of our education activity, uh, massive open online courses that are available now uh, on the, the platform of open learning and also in some and other um, educational platforms. So uh, as you see, we have uh, at least uh, six courses now and uh, uh, these courses are based um, 
um, on the results of our research projects, including our uh, environmental monitoring uh, project, and also uh, all the uh, resource results uh, of our university, thanks to participation in uh, UI Greenmatic. So, uh, dear colleagues, that's uh, all of my presentation. And now our next speaker, uh, please, uh, Professor Vasenyov, head of the Department of uh, Moscow Agriculture Academy, named after Timuryadev. Hello, how I can uh, start my presentation? Can I de demonstrate my screen? Простите за русский язык. Там у вас должно быть на экране написано демонстрация экрана. Yes. Нажимаем на зеленую кнопку. Starting. И компьютер спрашивает, что вам показывать. Вот, все пошло. Замечательно. Dear colleagues, thank you so much for your invitation. The exam, positive exam of Rudent University in West Treatment, it's a good exam for us. But I would like to concentrate your attention in our case on more on the campus, campus advantages, because in reality, Moscow Timiryazev Agricultural Academy, now Russian State Agricultural University, uh, have been developed 155 years ago outside of Moscow city. And still now we have enough area of green territories that give us some advantages for certain development that we would like to discuss with you today. First of all, some formal figures. We have um, campus in urban conditions, but we have enough big ratio of open space to total area. 90, 95 percent that it almost the maximum one. The same we have the biggest range in uh, the forest vegetation areas, in uh, um, open uh, planted vegetation areas, uh, areas uh, of campus for water absorption that give enough good conditions for uh, uh, environmental good quality at the territory of our campus. Organic waste treatments, we take more attention on this because we have huge volume of this kind of uh, waste because we are agricultural university, we have a lot of experiments with animals, with croplands, with uh, uh, airplanes and so on. And we are uh, trying to use them to uh, transform to uh, humus material for organic matter for soil for secondary use for utilization. We have a small area, small parking area due to, first of all, enough huge area of the university and that there is already three uh, metro station close to this named Timiryazevska and two station named Petrovskaya Razumovskaya. Pedestrian paths are available, enough uh, long, they are attractive for uh, citizens of the Moscow Timiryazev district and another one, and we met a lot of them in summer, in fall, in spring, in winter time, uh, they enjoy from the territory. There is uh, another, when we speak about educational problems, there we have not only Unicum uh, Soil Agronomy Museum with the biggest collection of soil monolite in the world, more than 3,000 ones. But we have a huge, we can call this collection of native soils in native landscapes that uh, give uh, good uh, possibilities uh, to explain not only for our students, but for secondary school students, for visitors about important to support natural or more or less natural ecosystem conditions. Our Saumata campus is in the territory of Timiryazev administrative district, which is one of the most environmental friendly district, because uh, it is in the northern part of Moscow, where there is more or less fresh air mass coming from north uh, western directions. Uh, our forest experimental station 
is the site of long term around 150 years, already almost 155 years. So vegetation and environmental monitoring with huge volume of already accumulated data that give us possibility uh, to be ready to give useful information for Moscow urban environmental monitoring system and uh, take special attention on the adaptation of land use uh, practice to current global change. Global change, not only climate, but uh, technology of land use, even in urban conditions. There is example of the first and uh, still single in Russia example of um, uh, edicovarian station of to study at the different height, not only energy fluxes, water fluxes, but carbon dioxide fluxes too. And there is example on the different level of the analysis at the background and so cover levels too. There is enough high variability of uh, vegetation, enough high variability of soil, cover enough high uh, variability of local ecosystem. And you know that when we have enough high variability uh, in uh, biotic compounds of ecosystem, it means that they are uh, enough stable. So we try to analyze what fluxes we have at different level, what part of system, because we have not only forest, of course, not only lowland, but a lot of uh, agricultural lands. So we try to understand what kind of practice could be uh, most environmental friendly, but from another side uh, could be profitable. Uh, when we analyze the real variability in soil cover, we need to take attention how they are sensitive to anthropogenic technogenic impact. Also, there is not so big at the territory of our district. For example, uh, we have average figures of pH, so pH values in Moscow around 7.5. And the same we have value for biggest in Moscow forests of let's see in the Austria. So it looks that maybe it is okay with pH uh, uh, in soil in Moscow. But from another point of view, soil pH average values in the zonal Podzoli results in Central Forest Reserve around 4 and 4.5. And exactly this kind of figures we have in our forest experimental station due to special regime of this land use if there is local position in the territory of Moscow. And uh, you can see that there is uh, statistical values that show uh, that there is very close to native soil cover conditions, even in case of regime soil acidity that are very sensitive to any anthropogenic impacts. From another point of view, we need to take into attention distribution of soil different species uh, and uh, trees species and uh, grassy species uh, through the misery life and micro life forms, because it gives us impression how we can be uh, more sensitive for local uh, results of global changes to uh, meet climate change. That you know that it's very active now especially in our latitudes and in Moscow, where the rate of warming almost three times higher than average planetary values. So we use special techniques in monitoring with high uh, repetition, uh, 10 years, sometimes 20 years, and then we separate the most representative figures about the changes. Actually, we use not only automatic station, but uh, handmade too. Uh, there is uh, comparative uh, analysis of agricultural fields and urban farming is becoming more and more popular with automatic stations and uh, uh, comparative of them forest background ecosystem with total area in our forest experimental station more than 200 hectares, 229 hectares. There is a good example for a discussion with our colleagues about productivity of uh, agricultural lands when we try to use on them environmental friendly, uh, friendly practices. This is example of our meeting with Italian colleagues with whom Rudayan has good connection to. 
based on this uh, long-term agroecological monitoring, we are developing fertilizing programming and economical prediction of agricultural land use in frame of agroecological decision support system. In case of forest, uh, we are able now to develop prediction models that uh, show us the influence of changes, uh, temperature soil, moisture soil, and the same atmosphere on the greenhouse gases and emissions that are very important in our case. And you can see that there uh, will be able to obtain enough good uh, correlation coefficients of these uh, transfer models. And uh, what is important is that this coefficient separation uh, due to uh, the annual season uh, has enough good repetition for the following years. A new equipment that we are developing and use together with our Redon colleagues, uh, with the leader Ricardo Valentini, who is honorary doctor of our university. These uh, three talkers who is distributed uh, it's a key elements of, uh, of uh, Internet of Things uh, smart monitoring systems that we are trying to develop together with your colleagues. Based on the results of this monitoring, we are developing recommendation how it can be um, um, it can be used in practice. First of all, to increase sustainability of forest ecosystem, not only agricultural one, and we try to develop. A new Forested, forested. Uh, new forested areas too. In this case, uh, together with our colleagues in the frame of Moscow um, summer ecological schools that we have already nine time of them. And then of course, lawn ecosystems that are very sensitive to uh, strong uh, anthropogenic impact. We are developing again with our colleagues from Rudin University best recommendation on the uh, soil ground material for this law and that allow uh, better conservation of original soil organic matter. And now we are able to change uh, these background materials into times um, with longer periods for their conservation. And of course, in Moscow, there is very actual problem of heavy metal pollutants. And I would like to show you the average figures for six year measurement and five representative sites when we analyze not only soil but in snow and plant materials too. And uh, I would like to ask you to take attention on this, this uh, sites number one, two, three, four, five. And now at the, uh, at the map of forest experimental station and you see that uh, most clear is near in the nuclear of the campus. So there is shown that there is positive effect that now colleagues that analyze um, uh, statistic data showed how many kilograms or even tons there is produced in our uh, as a forest ecosystem as agricultural ecosystems too. So I believe, as I already told, that in our collaboration with our colleagues, not only from Rudin, Moscow State Universities, and I believe we will be able to meet here new friendly colleagues who will be able to go in front of better results for green metrics of our university too. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Professor Vesenov. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, yes, uh, surely all we understand that uh, our collaboration is uh, research collaboration and educational collaboration, but uh, of course we cannot organize the life of our university without understanding the processes uh, in natural systems around us. So thank you once again, and as you see, this is a great job. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, is, if somebody have uh, some questions, please, you're welcome. But after all, all the discussion is possible. So, and uh, uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Hani Gafari, Assistant Professor of uh, Department of Environmental Science, uh, University of Kurdistan, Sanandai, Iran. Hello, everybody. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Great. 
Uh, I'm very pleased to participate in the fourth national workshop on UI uh, Green Metric World University Rankings for Russian Universities. I'm uh, going to speak about Iranian uh, green and sustainable universities. Uh, let me share um, the screen. Just checking, uh, do you see my uh, PowerPoint? Yes, it works, yes. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, well, uh, sustainable universities are uh, complex systems and play a crucial role as leaders in creating a sustainable future. There are several ways uh, that universities can be involved in sustainable development, including uh, planning, education, research, design, new construction, transportation, operations, community service development, and uh, other um, actually activities. Uh, in the recent decades, uh, many universities in Iran have taken steps to improve their environment performance and become more sustainable. Uh, as you see in this table, uh, Iran has 22 uh, universities on the green metric sustainability ranking. And uh, based on 2019 result, uh, the University of Zanjan got the first spot in Iran. Uh, well, um, as I uh, mentioned, uh, um, and uh, you can see in this slide, uh, these are uh, top universities on the uh, ranking list. And uh, from the country, universities of Zanjan, Kashan, uh, Gilan, and Isfahan are among uh, UI Green Metric World Universities ranking, I mean, uh, top universities. Uh, well, uh, about University of Zanjan, uh, this university is one of the pioneering universities in the country and uh, has been named as the most sustainable university in Iran and 48th worldwide. Uh, as you see in this slide, uh, the emphasis of uh, University of Zanjan is uh, on uh, infrastructure, waste management, uh, water management, education, and research. Uh, actually, uh, developing renewable energy is still a challenge uh, for this university. Uh, these are uh, some um, activities of uh, University of uh, Kaushan, uh, Iran's uh, second university on uh, this ranking uh, based on 2019 result. As you see, uh, this university uh, um, focuses on water management, education, and infrastructure. Uh, different universities of Iran uh, organized and hosted uh, various uh, national and international uh, green university conferences. Uh, as you know, uh, conferences provide a uh, great opportunity to grow more partnership and exchange experience. As you may know, uh, the sixth international uh, workshop on UI green metric uh, and also the third uh, international conference on green university will be held uh, in October 22 and will be hosted by University of Zanjan, uh, Iran. Uh, this event uh, will be held online uh, like this event. Uh, and uh, I invite uh, all of you to participate in this uh, virtual uh, meeting. Uh, as you see here, uh, the theme uh, for uh, this uh, workshop 
uh, is university's responsibility for sustainable development goals, world's complex challenge. Uh, here is uh, the uh, website address and uh, you can just register and uh, participate um, for free. And uh, the last, um, actually, and not the least, universities can work together to create a green, sustainable future. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ghaffari. Uh, dear colleagues, again, uh, if you have some question to our Iranian partners, please uh, let me know, let, uh, let us know. Um, we will discuss all our questions after this small session. And uh, it's my pleasure to invite our colleagues from Bashkirian uh, State Agrarian University. Dr. Mini Gazimov. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you use, ah, okay. We need to share my screen. Uh -huh. uh, can you close your uh, screen, please, Hari? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, I'm trying to just uh, stop, but uh, uh, I'm finding the connection. Just come uh, to the panel and uh, find the demonstration. Stop okay. demonstration or something like this. Okay, let me. Just... Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. What else, the colleague? Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes, it's okay. Okay, let's start. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants for National Roundtable. Uh, nice to see you guys. And uh, I wanted to talk about a very important problem on this day. And uh, an important problem for our countries, all the world, is environmental pollution by human waste and the limited nature of natural resources. Therefore, the transition to waste recycling is uh, urgent. About 3 billion tons of municipal salt waste are generated annually in the world. It is very important to process and dispose of them in a timely manner. Uh, solid municipal waste has a complex composition represented by both organic and inorganic components and a significant part of which is the material resource. Okay, uh, in Russia, in Russia, the most common approach to the management of municipal solid waste in the, is the disposal of, of unsorted waste in landfills and landfills as well is, as uh, incineration. When garbage is burned, uh, toxic substances are formed, dioxins and other compounds, which are extremely dangerous for animals and humans. Uh, according to the Federal Service for Supervision of Nature Resources in 2018, buried and birds. Uh, you can show the screen. And the next one. Uh, for 2019, the following were buried and burnt glass. Uh, you can see food waste, glass, polymeric materials, ferrous and non-ferrous metal, and uh, waste paper. Okay, let's continue. Uh, With the average cost of selective check, about 34 billion rubles are the lost annual. For compared one million people life for 2019 uh, is uh, 32.5 billion rubles. With the same success, this money could be earned by enterprises involved in the process of sorting and recycling waste. Due to the lack uh, of separate collection, the annual losses in the economy of our country can be estimated at more than uh, 230 billion rubles, and these amounts are gro growing every year. Currently, there are more than uh, 14,000 authorized waste disposal sites in Russia, occupying about 4 million hectares, which can be compared with the territory of Switzerland or uh, the Netherlands. 
The reason for increase in the number of landfills uh, is the slow introduction of a system of separate collection of uh, solid municipal waste, as a result of which the scale of, of environmental pollution by hazardous substances increases. The Republic of Bashkortostan is a part of the Volga Federal District of the Russian Federation borders on the Perm territories, Sverdlovsk, Chelyabinsk, Orenburg regions, uh, the, the Republic of Tatarstan, and the Yudmurt Republic. Uh, the capital is uh, Ufa city. Area uh, 1,042,947 kilometers square, population 4 million. Bashkiria is rich in natural resources. Forests occupy more than 40% of the territory. More than 3,000 rivers, rivers and lakes and diverse fauna. The Republic has three uh, reserves of federal significance. One national park, five natural parks, natural parks, uh, 143 natural monuments. The total 1 million hectares, about 7% of the entire territory of the Republic of Bashkortostan. In the industrial sector of the Republic, oil refining and uh, petrochemicals are highly developed. Bashkortostan is uh, one of the top five largest agricultural regions of the Russian Federation. Uh, the Bashkir State Agrarian University is engaged in training specialists for the agriculture sector one of the leading agriculture uh, universities in the country, ranking uh, sixth among all agriculture universities in Russia. Specialists in the environmental nature conversation uh, profile are trained by the Faculty of uh, Nature Management and Construction. The Department of Environmental Engineering, uh, Construction and uh, Hydraulics trains bachelors and masters in the field of environmental management and water use. Uh, the profile is environmental management of territories. Uh, uh, our university uh, in the near future has to join Greenman, we hope. And the next one, um, okay, the next one. Uh, most environmental projects and initiatives uh, are carried out together with the uh, training. In the Republic of Bashkortostan, uh, 2,932 uh, unauthorized dumps were registered on the territory of the Republic, the total area of which is uh, 2,300 hectares. To date, uh, to date, on the territory of the Republic of Bashkortostan, the system of separate collection is developing at the pace compar uh, comparable to uh, other regions. In Ufa city, uh, 55 sites with containers have been installed uh, where residents can separately, where, where residents and students can separately collect glass, plastic and paper in the future, the creation of such sites everywhere. On the campus of the Bashkir State Agrarian University near, to, uh, near the first and second uh, buildings and uh, uh, dormitories. You can, show, you can see on the screen. Um, there are four sites for separate waste collection, picture free. Separate collection of solid municipal waste is organized in all subdivisions of uh, Bashkir State Agrarian University. Uh, I talk about educational and uh, industrial buildings and uh, uh, dormitories, canteens, as they accumulate separately, uh, assembled components are, are taken uh, to container sites. The container plant is uh, equipped with the autonomous power supply system. Uh, lighting is provided by a solar battery. An innovative component of uh, our work 
is the creation of a smart digital management system in the field of waste management, which allows you to fill the filling uh, level this in the mobile application. We call it like uh, municipal solid waste or a higher education institution. System development is, uh, is being registered. A fixation sensor that monitor the level of filling of the container uh, and transmits this information to the mobile application. Next one. Uh, the sensor is small and doesn't, doesn't require a lot of electricity. Therefore, a solar panel is installed near the, the container platform that uh, transmits energy of this, on the sensor. To organize uh, their separate collection of solid municipal waste in the hostels uh, of the Bashkir State University, work was carried out to determine their morphological, morphological composition of solid municipal waste. It turned out that there, uh, there are practic practically no data on the morphological composition of uh, municipal solid waste in uh, dotted dormitories and they differ significantly from uh, the composition of municipal solid waste generated by the population uh, you can see on the screen under the guidance of professor minigazimov uh, the students of the university carried out studies on the morphological composition of uh, municipal uh, solid waste in the university dormitories using a special method by removing 15 liters of hostels, separating and uh, gravimetric research of components. Among the components were identified. Waste, waste paper, plastic waste, uh, scrap metal. Ultimately, the introduction of all measures of solid waste will allow to reduce the mass of waste disposed to the landfill by 50%, which should help uh, the payment for their disposal and the delivery of the collected secondary material resources will compensate for parts of the university's waste disposal costs. Summing up, we can say uh, that most of the constitu constituent uh, entities in the Russian Federation are, uh, are at the stage of organizing the selective collection and disposal of municipal uh, solid waste. The implementation of this project, uh, project could solve a lot of problems in the, our country, improving uh, the environmental situation and populate, populated areas creating jobs and solving a number of the other uh, important social problems. I think it's going to be a very important problem. Modern world in which concern for the presentation of nature has become uh, one of the trends in technologically advanced countries. Uh, science, the modern world is not able to solve global problems individ individually but can only cope uh, with them by joint efforts. At the end of my speech, I would like to say that work of, uh, of our university in the field of nature protection has been uh, repeatedly noted and international and all Russian competitions awarded with diplomas and awards. Uh, some of these achievements are show on the screen. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you for the invitation, guys, uh, and thanks for your attention. If you have a question, you can uh, ask me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues. So, uh, dear participants of uh, our workshop, please, if you have some questions to the uh, presented materials, please ask us. So I see 10 different letters in our chat.
but all these things are not about the presentations. So, dear colleagues, please, your questions. Okay, uh, if possible, may I ask, uh, probably, uh, dear colleagues from uh, Bashkir State uh, Agrarian University, could you say us, uh, tell us a few words about your educational programs? Uh, what educational programs uh, for environmental students do you have now? Uh, sorry, can you uh, repeat the last one? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't... Uh, what educational programs for environmental specialists do you have now? Uh, I think we have a lot of education for, for this, probably. Like uh, do you have a bachelor students or master students? Yeah, we have uh, bachelors and masters, a lot of. Uh -huh. And what is the specialty? Ecology and nature management or something else? Uh, ecology management, I think, and uh, uh -huh. that's all. Okay, so uh, we are colleagues and we are partners, <laughs> and probably uh, we can try to organize uh, some joint program in the future. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, probably some questions else. Okay, if not, um, it's possible to say that uh, this is a perfect experience in management of solid waste and uh, you have what to show to the colleagues and uh, find that uh, we have seen this presentation. Probably it's possible to extend your experience to another universities in Russia. Okay, uh, dear colleagues, uh, we have now uh, five minutes break. And uh, during uh, this five minutes break, uh, I would like to uh, ask uh, our Indonesian colleagues to manage us and to tell us how can we do our group photo. Okay, uh, probably we can do it after this presentation, after this small break. So now uh, we have a small break for five minutes and uh, uh, in five minutes uh, we will begin again. Hello, Redina. Uh, Hello, yes, 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 Janai yes, be here. Hello. Hello, how are you? Yeah. Thanks, May bye. I suggest uh, mm -hmm. that um, you know, once everyone uh, comes after the break, we can, mm -hmm. you know, uh, open the video and have a quick group photo, and then yes, go on it. with the sessions. Uh, can you manage us? Can you tell us how to do it? Uh, well, yes, uh, Sabrina can help. Uh, uh -huh. Just open uh, the video, and then we'll do. Uh, yes, you can use. Uh -huh. uh, your smartphone, if you like, or uh, Sabrina can do that for you. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. okay, Sabrina, can you help, please? Here. Here. Yeah. Hello, Sabrina. Hello. Uh, our group photo, please. Sorry. Коллеги, собираемся для групповой фотографии. Пожалуйста, включите ваше видео. А, вот уже. Отлично. Все, да? Да, пожалуйста. Все участники сейчас попробуем показать, как мы делаем. Yes, Sabrina, let's wait probably one minute. One minute, please. Uh -huh. Okay. Sabrina, give us the sign uh, when it's done. 
Oke. Okay. Oke. Yes, Thank you all. Yes. Okay, come. Yes. Did you take a photo? Yes, I guess so. Look at that. Okay. Okay. Sudah selesai, Sabrina? Sudah, Pak. Oke, okay, we're done. Thank you. Oke. Okay. Thank you too, and especially to organizers that combine all us together. It was very useful, I believe, for everybody. Thank you, Professor. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, dear colleagues, uh, we will continue in five minutes.
Uh, well, dear friends, let's begin our last part of uh, reports or presentations. I hope everybody is here. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, invite a representative of the State University of Land Use Planning, Yulia Yurova. Yulia, are you here? Yes, I am here. Hello, nice to see you. Please. Uh, okay. Юлия, на панели демонстрация экрана. Поводите мышкой. На зеленую стрелку нажимаем и выбираем экран, который хотим показать. Отлично. So I hope you can see my presentation. Yeah, it's okay, folks. Uh, my name is Yulia from State University of Land Use Planning. Uh, it's in uh, Moscow, Russia. So I want to um, and tell about uh, our experience of participation uh, in uh, UI Green Metro creating. Uh, and um, I can uh, start. Uh, in uh, 20, oh, one second. Uh, in 2018, our university signed a declaration of joining and further participation in uh, Green Metro called University Ranking Network. And in uh, uh, 2018, uh, our university was included in the rating and took uh, 455 place uh, of um, out of uh, 780 universities representing 85 world countries. Uh, the use of green campus practice uh, by uh, an educational organization uh, contributes to the dissemination of a culture of uh, sustainable development to all uh, stakeholders. Uh, some results about our university. Uh, you can see on the slide uh, a table with um, main results. And uh, I want to um, uh, tell about, uh, tell something. Uh, our university has uh, five um, uh, campuses, uh, which uh, two is uh, um, two uh, scientific educational bases. It's uh, Gorna and Chkalovska, uh, two dormitory for students, and uh, main uh, building main campuses. It's our university. Uh, the university is accordance with the requirements for implementation of educational activities for educational programs of higher education uh, on the basis of state standards, uh, uh, has equipping classrooms and uh, laboratories. Uh, also, our university has created a barrier free uh, and safe environment for education um, of disabled people and people with uh, some disabilities. Uh, it's uh, some information. Uh, next, uh, energy and uh, climate change. Climate change. Uh, 
the main building of our university uses an energy saving system, uh, energy saving lamps. Uh, you can see on the slides uh, it, in our canteen uh, and our canteen and uh, other campuses. Uh, are installed in rooms uh, where the traffic of people is very large and there is uh, no possibility of switching to full daylight. Uh, these slides uh, show one of example of a part of university that uses energy saving light bulbs. Uh, at the end of the use, these uh, lamps, uh, they're transferred for disposal uh, to a special organization. Uh, waste. As a part of rating at the National Project Ecology to achieve um, uh, sustainable development goals, the university has implement, uh, implemented a program for separate waste collection. Uh, for example, uh, it's uh, inorganic waste, namely construction waste is stored and exported in instantly to the waste uh, processing plant. Since uh, 2018, uh, our university has to the policy of double slide uh, printing. Uh, for example, it's uh, uh, all work at its test, uh, essays, reports, uh, etc. printed on the both slides, both sides. Uh, recently, most of the work is uh, transferred into digital form. In addition, uh, our university participates in the waste paper collection program. Uh, you can see it uh, on the slide. Uh, the paper is stored in the, the department of the university and then exported for processing. At the part of greening, a battery collection program also uh, is uh, introduced in our university. At, the uh, at the, our department of soil uh, science, ecology and nature management, uh, there is an, uh, special boxes for collection uh, used uh, batteries. Uh, the university uses a toxic waste uh, recycling program. Once or twice um, uh, every six months comes a um, uh, service for removal and disposal uh, these lamps. Uh, this, uh, after uh, this rating, uh, this experiment is a success and uh, in the future is a plan to install these uh, boxes for all um, uh, for all types of uh, waste uh, um, uh, uh, through the, um, uh, sorry uh, throughout the campuses in our campuses about water uh, water policy the university provided uh, centralized uh, waste uh, weighted treatment before discharge all the drains um, pass through the server and uh, get to the Koreanova water treatment facility. But at the moment uh, in our university is being developed a water, sa uh, water saving program. Since the main building of the university is located in the center and will be uh, in these uh, campuses, uh, will be installed special devices for local water saving uh, on the territories of the remaining campuses is being considered the possibility of uh, developing a project for the creation and installation of local treatment facilities. It's, for example, uh, two scientific educational base, uh, Gorna and Chkalovskaya. Uh, transportation. As you can see on the slide, uh, there are the parking lots uh, on the territory of the university. We have just uh, 50, um, uh, 50 lots for uh, for uh, bus, uh, for cars, uh, and uh, etc. Um, despite the fact that uh, public ground and underground transport is located near the university, uh, a bicycle parking lot will be equipped for the students' uh, mobility in uh, October, in this year. Education. Uh, the university conducts successful research work in the field of land use planning in Kadasta, ecology, uh, legal regulation of land relation, land use economic, identification of unused agricultural land, and putting them into agricultural circulation. Uh, the university also for activity actively uh, participates in conference uh, exhibitions of various levels and conducts independent uh, research. Environmental education in our university um, uh, introduced and uh, instilled in students and uh, applicants. Through career Goodens Day, environmental, product, uh, envir environmental projects uh, and meeting with uh, politicians and uh, environmental experts. 
the main link in the education all of students is uh, conducting uh, field and industrial practice at the scientific and educational base and um, a special organization. Uh, the use of green campus practice by the State University of Land is planning promotes a culture uh, of a sustainable development for all stakeholders. Uh, one of the form of interaction uh, was the scientific and education base uh, Gorna. The territory of this base uh, combines unique physical, geographical and agricultural agricultural future necessary for performing the educational, scientific, applied research and uh, production function of the department and uh, is designed to uh, ensure the sustainable development of natural uh, territories. Um, Field practice. Field practice is a mandatory element of the educational process in the system of higher education in uh, the natural sciences and in expanding and depending, uh, deepening uh, the knowledge of students, obtaining the process of theoretical study on the materials. You can see uh, on the slide our um, uh, field practice. Uh, we have um, uh, practice uh, hydrology, hydrochemistry, uh, ecology, landscape science, meteorology, climatology, and geoecology. It's uh, very interesting for students, uh, as for students uh, and uh, for um, and professors and other teachers. Uh, the uh, Uniqueness of uh, our scientific base with a variety landscape, tracts, faces allows masters and postgraduate students to test their knowledge uh, gained during training and feel the um, apply and uh, apply in uh, their profession. Um, in order to assess the current ecological state of individual components of the natural environment uh, uh, in the survey territory, uh, in the period from 2015 um, to the present uh, have been carried out uh, geoecological monitoring activities, uh, which you can see on the slide. For example, it's air conduction assessment, uh, uh, radiation inspection of the sites, so the study of surface and groundwater quality, etc. Uh, also, every year, together with the Department of uh, Geodesy and Cartography of the our University, uh, on the territory of Corne, uh, uh, work is carried out on equipping a hydrological post on the Asiota River, practical development of the produce um, procedure and method for performing work uh, on water bodies, and conducting systematic observation of the water regime and uh, meteorological phenomena. Um, every year, the number of students who are not indifferent to the problems and preservation of the environmental uh, is increased. The first field practice was organized in 2015. Uh, it's, uh, it was my group. Uh, as you can see on the slide, the number of students is steadily increased. This year, uh, despite the difficult epidemiological situation and the recruitment of students uh, in an online, uh, online mm -hmm. format, uh, format uh, the results in comparison with last year broke our records. As a part of the field work, students and uh, professors conduct additional research for further writing of scientific uh, articles, scientific paper, dissertation, thesis. Uh, as an example, there is a study of plant communities together with the staff of the botanical garden. Uh, the fight against weeds, uh, such as hogweed, maybe you know Heraklium sosnowski. Uh, this dangerous and harmful plant reduce um, any vegetation and causes damage to uh, territories, especially in the small region, small medium region. Uh, employees of the university received a patent for the introduction of a method uh, of controlling this weed and um, testing on this method brought significant uh, uh, results. In addition to a detailed study of flooring, the scientific base uh, conduct um, uh, research on uh, 
uh, environmental quality assessment in the framework of geological monitoring in 2015-2020 to create a geological passport of the Sutter River Basin. Uh, you can uh, see this information on our website, uh, which you can see on the first slides. Um, it's, uh, you can see on the slide uh, uh, this uh, hogwit, uh, Heraklion Sosnowski. The territory of the Gorna is considered a green campus because it meets uh, the general requirements for smart buildings for five construction functions. It's uh, automation, security, energy, water, internal environment, and lighting. So, um, the results of research of the SEP Gorne uh, are the basis of scientific uh, rep reports, articles, final qualification works, uh, dissertation, thesis, etc. Uh, prospect of uh, research in the green campuses include the establishment of the number of field um, of integrated geoenvironmental laboratories, uh, organization and development of uh, ecological trails and water routes for the study of problems of geoecology and nature management, uh, geoenvironmental monitoring uh, of the basin of small and uh, medium rivers, uh, development of proposals for, uh, for the improvement of water quality of the Sutter River and the state of the field of recreation. And as well as training students um, to participate not only in preparation uh, of uh, Russian research and uh, Russian Sciences Foundation, with, uh, but also in uh, contractual work on environmental monitoring. Um, that's all, thank you. Thank you, that's all. If you, any have, if you have any question, please ask. So, Julia, thank you. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your uh, opportunity for us to um, see your experience. And uh, really, it's possible to say that probably these uh, natural science um, educational directions are probably most uh, difficult in uh, um, support uh, of these activities uh, of practice, etc. It's really difficult to organize sometimes all these practices and uh, to uh, uh, follow all the requirements and in addition to show good experience of the university. Uh, as for example, in your university, your experience in uh, waste management, in uh, water management, water saving, energy management, so on. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, if the colleagues uh, have some question, I think uh, it's possible to discuss uh, your experience uh, after uh, the next two presentations. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, the next our speaker is uh, Irina Putilova, head of the uh, Scientific and Educational Center Energy Ecology. Um, yes, please. Yes, we see the presentation, but we do not hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to the organizers for inviting uh, me to share this experience of our Moscow Power Engineering Institute and in the field of climate change and ecological issues. I, uh, I'm heading the department called the Center for Science and Education, Ecology and Power Engineering of the Moscow Power Engineering Institute. And first of all, I'd, I'd like to say that I'm not responsible for the rankings. It, my idea was just to share our experience, our vision, and uh, our opportunities uh, on ecological issues. Okay. Uh, my presentation will cover uh, four main directions. Research activity of our institute training, environmental education, and uh, additional education, like improvement of professional skills and pro uh, professional retraining. 
of listeners of power engineering companies and uh, working uh, in energy um, industries and enterprises. Concerning the research activity, you see uh, there is a large number of different um, works, uh, res results of research activity. I'm not going to read all of them. I'm just uh, focusing uh, on the main that uh, we have different research groups and different uh, scientific teams working in different departments and they uh, make research on emission reduction like NOx, SOx and greenhouse gases reduction. Uh, they investigate climatic conditions and uh, they, there is the, the laboratory uh, that is focused on climate change and so on and so forth. Uh, also noise emissions reduction, electromagnetic impact and so it is the uh, result of the five-year activity for our uh, research groups. Then uh, uh, I'd like to say that we, uh, in our research activity, we, we use different facilities uh, of infrastructure, like the experimental and instrumental base of the Department of Environmental Engineering and Labor Protection, uh, the base of our department and the best available technologies database of our center, the Center for Collective Use of Environmental Monitoring and other databases and software systems. Our main partners are power companies like Mosenerga, Moe, Canal and Interal. Uh, we also uh, have partners in the regional heating companies and we uh, collaborate with the power equipment manufacturers and with the metallurgical companies. We collaborate with the Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences, with the Moscow uh, State University, with the University of Civil Engineering and with some other research institutes. What concerns our projects and international partners and platforms and associations and so on? Uh, we are part of the Russian German project uh, climate friendly economic activity, implementation of the best available technologies in the Russian Federation. So we worked together with the German Society for International uh, Cooperation. And this project, we also uh, cooperate with the University of Bonn where the California Institute of Technology and where the Gorgon University. Uh, for more than 15 years, I've been presenting uh, our institute in the World Coal Combustion Product Network. So we, uh, I, I'm going to tell you a little bit later about uh, th this activity and in the European Coal Combustion Products Association. Concerning uh, teaching students, we have a plenty of uh, educational disciplines, uh, more or less focused on the uh, ecological issues and environmental uh, problems. Uh, it is ecology and power engineering, environmental technologies at thermal power plants, environmentally friendly technologies, technological safety, thermal power plants, water and fuel technology and power engineering, energy heating technology and some, some other disciplines. Uh, according to the bachelor's and master's programs. So they are listed all together here. Concerning school kids, we uh, participated in the section ecology in the Open Moscow Engineering Conference uh, called Potential. We uh, participated in, in the city conference on resource uh, conservation and we also participated in different festivals and uh, conduct, uh, conducted lectures, delivered lectures and conducted uh, Olympiads. And we have the University Saturdays on technosphere sa safety in the urban environment. So we are actively working also uh, and uh, presenting our experience at different scientific and technical conferences. And we organized uh, the youth ecological movement called Green Generation. We 
prepare and publish different scientific and methodological materials and give interviews. Concerning the experience of uh, my uh, department, the Center for Science and Education, Ecology and Power Engineering. So we have two directions. We have research and development activity uh, on ecological pro problems in power uh, engineering and uh, environmental protection. And we have additional training and uh, improvement of professional skills and retraining programs for listeners, for trainees uh, working in different power companies. Uh, in our center, we use the systematic approach in this field, starting with the research and development on ecology and power engineering, training and retraining of personnel of power companies. We develop uh, the educational and other teaching aids, informational materials and reference materials. We create uh, and update the database and we organize the conferences and workshops on ecological issues. So the main research activities of our center you, you see here. So we are focused on ecological pro problems in this power industry. And our special focus is coal ash handling. So coal and uh, fly ash and coal, uh, flag uh, produced during combustion of different types of fuel. So we do the research and development in this field and we make consultancy, uh, collect uh, uh, and process different different information on nature protection technologies uh, and do um, many other things I'm going to tell you a bit later. Uh, research activities on coal ash handling is that we uh, prepare, we develop the, the normative documentation uh, and we are focused on dry, uh, dry systems, dry uh, fly and bottom ash removal systems at power plants. And uh, we made a huge amount of work at power plants and uh, we uh, developed different technical solutions in this field uh, that are environmental friendly, technologically reasonable and economically efficient. The results of our educational work you see here, we, for more than 23 years, we trained more than 1,500 listeners. I mean, the, the results of the center, not of the Institute, of course. We uh, publish different reference books, monographs, and hundreds of teaching aids. Uh, and in the year 2007, we took the environmental award in the category Education for Sustainable Development. Uh, here you see the books and manuals we um, published, uh, Ecology and Power Engineering was the manual published uh, in the year 2003. It is the result. Uh, it is the result of work of our teachers, uh, who train our listeners uh, during the courses, and we also publish the state of the art nature protection technologies in electric power engineering. And uh, what is very important is that we develop the informational system, the best available and prospective nature protection technologies in the Russian power industry. It is the database. Here you see the website link, and uh, it was developed uh, according to the Moscow Power Engineering Development Program. Uh, the copyright holder is the Institute, and uh, my, my father and me were the authors of, of this uh, database. It is free of charge. You can feel free to, to download uh, the, the materials, the PDF files. It uh, has uh, and covers all the issues of the uh, environmental protection uh, problem, like general ecological issues, air and water protection, ash handling, complex technologies, factors of physical influence, advanced technologies, energy saving, and renewable energy. Uh, it, oh, sorry, uh, it uh, was uh, three times updated, and uh, last uh, last year it was uh, switched to the other platform, and we plan to update it uh, with more materials. Uh, and we have the editorial board, and we uh, the system is bilingual. We have the Russian and the English version as well, so they are identical. We uh, conducted. Uh, nine international conferences and workshops in the field of ecology and power engineering and uh, college handling. 
Uh, seven of them were uh, held in Russia and two abroad, and we um, are going to continue this work. So I'd like to conclude that our institute uh, has many years of experience and has the vast potential for solving ecological and environmental problems and uh, studying the consequences of climate change. And so we see our goal in uh, environmental preservation and uh, limitation of the uh, management impacts uh, from the production from the industry. And uh, it's very important to use this uh, systematic approach to uh, train the qualified personnel, green-minded personnel who can make environmental sound and responsible decisions. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, you're welcome. I'll finish. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Putila. I think uh, uh, we will a little wait with questions and uh, all the questions are after the next speaker. Our last speaker uh, is a representative of the Siberian Federal University. Uh, I would like to invite Arsak Peño Alberto Jose, head of the Laboratory for Complex Research on the Dynamics of Forest of Eurasia, Associate Professor of the Department of Ecology and Nature Management of the Institute of Ecology and Geography. Please, you're welcome. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and thanks for the opportunity to take part in this conference. As in the previous, previous lecture, I'm not directly linked with the uh, green metrics. However, I found a very interesting initiative. And I will talk about one of the main concerns of the Siberian Federal University, which is the effect of climate change on Siberian forests. It's a fact that climate is changing. And you can see in this quite well-known plot that the rising is temperature is being recorded from the beginning of the instrumental measurements. And in the recent decade, this increment is even faster than before. But if we think more or we focus in the Russian territory, we can see a similar impact of, of the climate change with an increment of temperature, also quite fast in recent decades and even faster than the global average. However, this is not an homogeneous pattern. So the temperature is changing not in homogeneous ways along the whole territory. In this map, we can see how the Arctic or the Northern regions are warming faster than the southern. And something similar is happening with the precipitation. It's not an homogeneous pattern. We found some places which actually are getting wettest and some other which on idea are really getting drier. And this is quite bad because at the end, if we have an increment of temperature, this will lead to uh, an increment of transpiration or and finally an increment of drought, which is something which is facing Southern Siberia in the recent years. And Checking the news from this weekend in Google, so we can see that this is uh, climate change is already it's already impacting our our region, and we can see, for example, how the Arctic is warming with rising temperatures. The future we are worried about is already here. The Arctic is burning like never before. The tundra climate is already being affected by climate change. The relief of some territories is also changing to climate change. This is happening in the tundra in the north where are appearing these huge holes because of the gas is going out, which is also quite problematic. Then this year was quite trending in the news that Siberia was reaching records in warming. Or again, related with the holes in the tundra. So they are releasing uh, dangerous gases from the atmosphere, mostly methane, which is even worse than CO2 for the greenhouse effect. And also related with the permafrost Darwin, scientists now are starting to think that it could be problematic that diseases that are trapped in this, in this uh, ice are going to be released to the atmosphere and we are not ready to face this kind of uh, diseases. And now we have a great example with this pandemic that we are not really prepared to face this kind of events. The a projection of temperature for different years and different climate change scenarios. But in general, we have an increment of temperature, which is more evident in the northern areas of Russia. 
areas like Western Russia is getting drier or will get drier and other parts will get wet. Anyway, all this will have a severe impact on the forest ecosystems of the region. But what about Siberia? So Siberia is a huge territory and it has different kinds of ecosystems from the taiga in the north to the forest step in the south or to the mountain regions. And of course, all these kinds of territories will suffer the consequences of climate change in different ways. And this is basically what could happen is, okay, changes in temperature and precipitation and other uh, events like uh, storms or fires, which are every year more strong and more frequent in all around the world, will have an important impact on forest dynamics. Will be traduced like uh, shifts of biomass or shifts of migration of species, disturbances in dynamics of the forest, decay of some species, mortality of the trees, which also have negative impacts, not only in the ecological point of view. So uh, Siberia depends in part from the timber wood and all ch these changes in the forest dynamics or forest structures could affect also the wood quality, the number of species, the diversity, the size of the trees. So at the end, the climate change will have or could have a very diverse kind of impact. These are just a couple of examples. In this picture, we can see the effect of the fire in, in, the, in the taiga, which is interesting because in these kind of cases, it's not only the, the trees which are dying. So it's also all the soil ecosystems. There is uh, this area is rich in lichens, which burns very fast, but at the same time, it takes a long time for the recovery of the ecosystem. Or this is even closer, close to the city of Krasnoyarsk, which is the impact of uh, insect outbreaks. So every year, also thanks to climate change, the impact of insects attacking some particular species is higher and higher. And although these insects are only killing one species in particular, at the end are affecting the complete dynamic and structure of the forest. In our case, or what we do in the laboratory is basically try to combine different proxies, starting with the dendrochronology, which is the study of the tree rings in the wood, going a little bit deeper to the wood anatomy, which is analyzing how is the structure of the cells inside the rings and how these cells react to climate change, which is also very important for the balance between carbon and water, which is an important component in a global scale. In addition, we try to use model to understand how climate conditions affect tree growth or forest growth in the past and try to predict how it will be in the future. We also use uh, remote sensing tools like satellites to try to identify forest productivity or phenology, which is also quite strongly linked to climate change. And finally, in some particular sites, we have in situ instruments which, in which we are recording some physiological characteristics of the trees during the growing season, like for example, tree growth and sub, uh, subflow movement, which is also quite important to understand how healthy is a tree and then project to how healthy is the forest stand. The idea we have is not only to, to give information from one of these proxies by itself, is to try to combine to give a better picture of what is happening in, in one forest and also at the same time provide through reports or publications information to policy makers to try to get a better decision on how to manage the forest or how to be prepared to the future climate conditions. Where do we work? Well, we work in several parts over the Russian territory. These are only showing my the size in which I personally work with, but we have some colleagues which work in all the north of the territory in the Arctic, which in that way combining what is happening in the north and the south, we can have a better idea of what is happening in the whole territory and try to understand the response to climate change. And of course, this is not a task we do by ourselves. We have uh, plenty of collaborations with Russians and foreigner institutions in which we try all the time to produce new knowledge, to provide new information to people who really take decisions, and also to try to form and um, stimulate the study of ecological issues. So our final goal at the end is publication of scientific papers. 
And this is an example of papers published in the last couple of years related to climate change or the effect of climate change on trees. But also we try to, to promote the not only scientific, uh, but we don't try to tar target only the scientific community through scientific papers. We try to also create some short films in which we show what are we doing, what are we doing with the results we get. We try to collaborate also with the local media, TV, newspapers, and so on, to try to provide information in a more easier way to people who are not specialized in the field. In this way, we also collaborate with the future scientists, the future generation of people in different activities like scientific festivals or scientific camps in which kids are already starting to get an idea of what are the problematics we are facing currently and what it's possible to do at the end to try to, to improve all the ecological situation. As some milestone we have is, of course, the first is to understand the effect of climate change on different forest ecosystems, then to project how this ecosystem might respond to, to future conditions. We also try to create synergies with other fields because, for example, it's not the same what is happening in the aquatic territory or in aquatic ecosystem than in the rest. And we are trying to combine different fields of research to try to really get a good insight of what is happening in one particular area. We also try to promote a lot of the formation with different kinds of courses, uh, activities with different kinds of public. Finally, the divulgation, as I mentioned before, through scientific papers, but also through media, newspapers, videos, and so on. And with the hope that all this information will reach at some point, the people who really make the decision and who can create laws to be prepared for the, for the future conditions. That's all, thank you very much. Yes, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, now dear colleagues, please, uh, probably you have some questions to our speakers of uh, this session. Please let me know. So uh, I do not see any questions. So uh, the time of our third session is over now. And uh, generally we could uh, switch to the open discussion. Uh, this is the uh, last part of our uh, meeting today. And uh, uh, what should be doing this open discussion? Please, uh, first of all, uh, you can uh, share your, your uh, opinion, uh, share your understanding of the uh, role of the university uh, in our changing world, um, the role of university in greening. You can ask uh, the organizers uh, all about uh, the ranking, all about the technology of uh, evaluation, probably about uh, some uh, moments that uh, are not uh, quite clear till now. So uh, please, dear colleagues, you're welcome. And uh, uh, I will uh, try to switch on our last presentation today about uh, our open discussion. So it's here. Uh, just a few moments before we begin. I need to demonstrate the screen. Let's go. So this is our open discussion today. Uh, and uh, generally, we are here, the representatives of uh, many different universities of Russia and of some foreign, uh, foreign universities. And uh, uh, as I see today, we had the maximum number of participants, uh, 63 participants. So uh, I hope that uh, some of you have to say something. Uh, generally, I thank, uh, thank you, dear colleagues from uh, the University of Indonesia. Thank you for this uh, uh, presentation about uh, the uh, um, discussions. So, and uh, um, what can we discuss today? Uh, we can discuss our activities in these uh, directions uh, as shaping global uh, higher education and research in sustainability in creating global sustainability leaders. 
and partnering on solutions uh, for sustainability changes. So uh, what you see now is a, um, an example of uh, such um, discussion that was presented, uh, that was sent us uh, from the University of Indonesia. If you have a word to say, uh, please uh, share your opinion and uh, uh, probably you have to uh, add some words about uh, our evaluation criteria, evaluation uh, directions like setting an infrastructure, energy and climate change, waste, water, transportation, education. So please, you're welcome, dear colleagues. And uh, as I know, uh, currently our uh, representative of the university from Iran want to say a few words, please. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. Lobman. Dr. Logman, do you hear me? Canada. Yes, yes. Hey, Can you hear me? Can you hear me, dear colleague? Yes, 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 it works, please. Oh, sure. Dear colleagues, hello and good day. I hope you are all in a good mood. I am Logman Karamani, an associate professor at the University of Kurdistan of Iran. I would like to thank the colleagues of the Ecological Faculty of People's Friendship, University of Russia, for inviting us to today's meeting. Dear colleagues, to achieve a green life, we have no other way but to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and save energy. Human activities must change to prevent catastrophe on Earth. Finding a way to limit our dependence on fossil fuels depends on developing new green technologies and proposing environmentally friendly solutions. Advances in technology play an important role in building a green and sustainable future. And universities, which are responsible for educating future professionals for the good of society, have been and remain pioneers in preserving the human ecosystem and promoting this culture in society. Dear colleagues, in today's world, population growth coupled with increased energy demand often exposes communities to air pollution. Climate change, global warming, and an increase in environmental pollutants are the main reasons why today's societies, especially universities, strive to, ma strive to maintain clean energy and conserve the environment. The movement of universities as leading institution in preserving the human ecosystem in the fields of green governance innovation is essential. Environmental management reduces energy consumption and saves by encouraging the use of clean energy. In today's world, more and more universities on the borders are taking steps in these areas, so that in addition to being role models for society, they can introduce students to this culture and institutionalize environmental governance in communities. According to the Green University Plan, this is primarily about the green areas of the university, but seriously, it means managing the environment and all human activities the least harm to the environment. In general, the goal of creating a green university is to introduce green management at the university. In Iran, after the approval of the national green level system in 2019, the university level is registered and assessed based on it. This system meets the highest level of international standard, which is developed taking into account the local needs of the country. Thanks for your attention. Yes, thank you for your good words. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, please, uh, your comments probably to our meeting today. Uh, so, as I said, uh, we need to discuss our plans for future. 
Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to uh, invite some of uh, the universities, uh, some of participants today. Please, uh, probably uh, somebody could help us with the organization of the next uh, workshop. So if you have such initiatives, if you have uh, such opportunity, please, uh, you're welcome. Tell us your words. Okay. Uh, so, dear colleagues, uh, we are coming to the uh, last part of our meeting today, and uh, we discuss uh, the main results. Uh, if you not, uh, if you do not have any questions uh, to the uh, representatives of the center of uh, UI grid metric uh, ranking. So uh, in any case, you can write us, you can write the organizers, you can uh, ask the organizers to help you with uh, preparation of uh, your uh, reports. Um, you can write also me, uh, Rodin University, please, uh, it's possible to uh, find the uh, answers to your questions together and probably uh, you will uh, need also our advice but probably you can uh, take our experience use our experience to prepare your reports so and uh, now i think uh, if you don't have uh, any comments if you don't have any suggestions anymore uh, i think it's possible to come to the uh, last part of our meeting today to the closing remarks so uh, please, uh, probably Dr. Junaidi or uh, Professor Rivi. Yes, I would like uh, just to say thank you so much to you and all friends, all the speakers from Russian University and also from uh, Iran today. It's such a wonderful uh, presentations that you have shown us. And I could imagine I could go through uh, websites and university, you know, the window of the world now to see how uh, you have moved from strength to strength. Uh, I would like uh, all of you to email us if you would, uh, so that we can be part, you can be all be part of uh, our network. And then um, if you still uh, would like to, uh, conduct some meetings in your universities uh, to invite all uh, uh, university leaders in your university to exchanges. Uh, we, were, we are welcome to uh, add open for you. And also, uh, please, uh, as uh, Dr. Redina, Margarita Redina already said today, uh, please uh, join us and also um, uh, learn, uh, we can learn from each other and also we look forward to learn from you. Thank you so much again. And I think uh, Dr. Junaidi is there. Thank you so much, Redina. Thank you. And yes, I hope thank you. Thank you. It was really nice to see you and to hear you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can I have a word, please? Yes, yeah, sure, please. Okay. Margarita, I'd like to thank you once more. Yeah, it's a, a huge amount of work to organize it, but uh, uh, in case there is the um, unfavorable ecological situation, we can use different distance technologies and that is the new development for us. Yeah, and in our university, it's also the new experience and we know how to do it now. And uh, in case uh, all the speakers are not against, could you please share uh, where all the presentations of the speakers? Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think we will place all the materials of the meeting today uh, on the web page. Uh, I will try to send it to all the rep uh, to all the participants. I think it's uh, necessary to organize. Yes. Yeah. And one more thing, maybe in case someone uh, can see where we can collaborate. Um, in the international projects, uh, first of all, educational, but also research. Yeah, please feel free to contact our institute and maybe, because we had such an experience, we had uh, the representatives from the Asian countries last year. Uh, they came and uh, we 
the level of lectures in English in the field of environmental protection, and we went to the power plant to see how it works. Uh, yeah, and uh, it is possible to think of some international cooperation projects, and we also can do it uh, distantly in case it's we have no chance to see each other uh, yes. personally. Huh? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your idea. I think it's a very good idea and uh, it's necessary to uh, to uh, hold this contact and to develop this uh, partnership, this collaboration. Yes, thank sure. you. I thought that uh, the, the, uh, the visit last year, the uh, World University uh, visitors, you know, uh, come and join and also uh, it was it to land, uh, planning university in Moscow. What university were you from? Uh, Moscow Power Engineering. Power Engineering. Thank you so much. We will tell our friends about that open for discussion. If you would like to posting something in our website, you're also open, you know, uh, any information or whatever. Uh, please visit our websites, all the presentations, all the videos, all the YouTube channel, uh, videos and uh, brochures and books, and also. Uh, the last one is the university leaders experience during the COVID-19, how they overcome the problem. Uh, people also, uh, the university leaders are all, were also wrote about that uh, in our book on that and we will uh, publish that too. So because uh, we are facing the same problem all over the world so that uh, if we collaborate, that is something that we can strengthen. Together, we hope that we can open up that problem. What's your name, your name, name again, please? My name is Irina. Oh, Irina. Thank you so much, Irina. I just invite you to use our database because it's free of charge. There are about 500 uh, PDF files there in both languages. So I see I administrate this database and we have uploaded and we add new materials and uh, there are many things there concerning environmental issues and uh, the authors are around the globe yeah because we uh, conduct the special events we take part in them and there is the editorial board we separate what to place and what not to place <laughs> so yeah and uh, it's good to have such a it's the unique one, I would say, because uh, we worked hard for many years to uh, just to, to, to get these materials. Yeah, and uh, so it's the, the experience yeah, that is gained for, for many years and uh, people can just go there even, they do not have to log in. They just visit this site, use the keywords or whatever, and then just download the information. So it's, it's free of charge. Mostly resources are paid in case you want to have some interesting information, but here it is free and we have, we are all tax payers and we have to have to, to understand what are the best ways uh, to, to, to save our environment, to what are the technologies, environmental sound technologies, but it is applied to the power engineering sector, of course, but why not? Can you write the website of your university in the chat box, please? In the okay, chat. okay. Uh, uh huh. In chat, okay. I will do it. Thank you so much. Uh, I think uh, one of the things that we need to know is uh, speak closer to the microphone. Yeah? Speak closer yeah. to the. Uh -huh. Yes, we know that some, uh, some universities in Russia are providing. Uh, okay, mpei.ru. Yeah, Moscow Power Engineer. And uh, uh, after that, I will place the the website uh, to the database link. Okay. I think that's a idea. It is open system of information. What? One moment. Here. Okay. Oh, open system of information. Yeah, and here you can just go and uh, see. All the all the environmental issues and use the English version. Wow, yeah, that is something that we would like to note. That uh, we also learn. Some of my uh, students also are using uh, books and uh, 
provide open source file provided by Russian universities. But this is pointed out that you have done a lot of work to collect this information and also to share it with us. Thank you so much, Irina. You're welcome. Is there anybody else would like to share something or something that we would like, we're supposed to know about management of universities? Uh, I visited uh, some uh, republic uh, in in uh, Russia this afternoon uh, because of, most of you call the federation uh, republic, but it's really interesting to know that uh, in Ufa, for example, uh, you've done uh, a lot of uh, deployment of uh, new uh, innovation in uh, sustainability. Anybody else would like to add up something, please? I'm so happy to know that some of you are together, you know, on the photos today, uh, some uh, taking up uh, in one frame with what, two percent. I think, thank you so much, Irene, uh, Redina. It's just a wonderful meeting and very fruitful, I think. And also to our friend from uh, Moscow Agricultural University, thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Ivan, I think. Yes, Ivan, thank you too in return. I believe it was very useful experience. For me, it's the first time participation in this uh, so serious uh, conference in the field of green metrics. And I obtained uh, for three hours today more than in previous three years that I was involved in information preparation. And I believe that we obtained no, a new idea that we can use in our university too. And this would be very useful for us. So maybe we'll have possibility after coronavirus problem to organize, I don't know, not only online, but uh, a real conference meeting and visit it. Uh, for example, in Moscow, there is a set of universities. Each of uh, them has their strong sites in green metrics, but from another side has possibility to improve another site. And uh, the same, I believe, in Iran. So I believe it will be very interesting to develop this relation in the future too. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, uh, Professor Ivan, uh, I put my uh, WhatsApp number in the chat room. If you would like to contact me, please. We, be, we, we know that some universities on agriculture normally are uh, uh, the, um, you know, innovative, find many innovative way to be a sustainable university. So if you could uh, be maybe uh, share also your information to other country next time, uh, please help us, you know, to bring us, uh, bring about uh, good words to everybody. Uh, could you take note of my uh, WhatsApp number and email address, please? I would like to look forward for all of you, Irina also, and also others. I'm sorry that I couldn't read your name because it's written in Russian. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's why. It's a very good uh, idea to, to organize the next one in Moscow. Maybe it would be a, a practical one when we just gather together and see how it works here, there. It will be like a practical excursion yeah, to different universities. It's a great idea. One thing is just to talk and another thing is to see how it works and to, to use this experience in our universities where it is not used. And I believe it uh, could be very interesting for our even first grade university students to organize uh, the excursion to Rudayent and energy universities, try to understand how their colleagues in these universities organize their activity in that or another uh, kind of West uh, treatment. Because that I have seen uh, today, there is uh, a lot seen that we are uh, still have not so good developed uh, as in another universities. And for young students, it could be especially important to obtain their colleagues with their aid, with their efforts, with their possibility in another university student. Not only for students, but also for mm -hmm. professors, maybe new, some mm -hmm. new elements, new tools that are not mm -hmm. applied for the moment, but they could be. Okay, colleagues, I can tell only you're welcome. 
Mm -hmm. A year ago, we had a, a world tour of sustainable uh, campuses, sustainable universities, and uh, some representatives of foreign universities was here in Rudan and some Russian universities too. It's possible to repeat it. It's possible to make this uh, uh, standard work. And each year, we, every year, we will uh, come together and we will come to one university to another university. Yes, it's a good idea. Thank you. And uh, oh, I forgot to say my best regard to Professor Filippo, uh, Vladimir Filippo, your president and vice president. Uh, thank you so much for organizing and uh, keeping us with uh, keeping with us. And also, we look forward for your insight and our collaboration maybe next time. And also for uh, Moscow Agricultural University, we look forward for your uh, more uh, you know uh, insight into sustainability uh, uh, evaluation, maybe uh, if you think that there is something that we should add up, uh, uh, Professor Ivan Parenev, we need to look at that also, uh, Dr. Irina, uh, uh, we look forward for your comments also. I think that's all, Redina. Thank you so much for arranging everything. Thank you, everyone, for keeping up all, for all these uh, hours with us. Even though we are uh, four hours apart, uh, halfway through the earth, but we look like it's look like we are very close to each other. Thank you, Redina. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, dear colleagues, thank you so much too, and uh, uh, thank you for your participation. And I hope you, we will continue our collaboration, and uh, we will see you the next few days and months. So, uh, welcome to Rodin University again. Thank you. Bye. All the best. Bye. Take care. Спасибо за Спасибо, дорогие коллеги. Спасибо. Всего хорошего. До свидания. До свидания. Thank you, Redina. Спасибо. Bye bye. Thank you. Oh, uh, Dr. Junaidi, wait yes. a little. Bit. Yes. Uh, when we discussed this meeting, I told that tomorrow we have a small meeting too. Would ah, okay. it be possible that somebody from uh, UI Green Magic uh, will hold a small